Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all my dear students. Today we are going to learn a new lesson from the maths textbook that is unit 7 fractions. And believe me children, this lesson is going to be a very interesting, enjoyable and a very easy lesson to understand. So let us start learning now. In the part 1 of this lesson, you will be learning understanding fractions, fractions of a region wherein you will learn what are halves, next what are thirds, next what are fourths and the last one children writing fractions. Understanding fractions. Just let me know children. How often have you heard these sentences at home like you have left quarter glass of milk. I have finished reading three fourths of the book. I want only half a chapati. The words used here in the sentences like quarter, three fourths or half. These words are actually the maths word children and how to use these words and how is it useful in our real life that we'll be learning in this chapter. Just look at the picture given there. The girl has only half of the whole chapati on her plate. And you can see the lady has three-fourths glass of water. Now the words three-fourths or half, what does it represent? We can understand that it means it is referring to a part of a whole. We can see that the half of the chapati is a part of a whole chapati. And the glass is filled with Part of water means it is not completely filled. So, what is a fraction? We can say that anything which refers to a part of a whole is called a fraction. A fraction is a part of a whole. When we talk about parts of a whole, we actually use fractions. Now, we know that a fraction is a part of a whole. We can understand this from the picture given here. Children, a whole means it represents the complete circle. And you can see that a part means a part of that circle. So what's a fraction? A fraction can be written for anything which represents a part of a whole thing. A fraction is a part of a whole. A whole can either be a region or a collection. How can a whole be a region? It is a region when the whole object is one. Look at this example given here. If we have one object and we are taking a part of that object children, then we can write the fraction for that whole. It is a collection when there is a group of objects. Example, look at this. If we have a group of things like here, we have three bottles out of which two bottles are shaded. That means two bottles are used. Then also we can write the fraction for this collection. And how to write that children, we will learn after this. One more example, have a look on it. We can write the fraction for group of stars or the bunch of keys. So the stars shaded here or the keys which are shown in color. That means that number of things are used and we can also write the fraction for such group of objects. And let us learn now how we can write the fraction for the shaded part. We know that a whole can either be a region or a collection. Now let us learn how can we write Fractions of a region. Fractions of a region. When an object is divided into number of equal parts, then each part is called a fraction. How many equal parts are there in the shapes? Just look at the shapes, children. Now let us write how many parts are these shapes divided into. In the first figure, the first shape 
is divided into two equal parts. So there are two equal parts in this. In the second shape or figure, we can see it is divided into four equal parts. So there are four equal parts in this. In the third figure, we can see that rectangle is completely divided into five equal parts. So it has five equal parts. In the next figure, we can see the triangle equally getting divided into three parts. So it has three equal parts. And the last one, children, it's again divided into six equal parts. Now let us learn how we can write the fractions for the parts of a whole. So for that, first of all, let us learn what are halves. When a whole is divided into two equal parts, we call the equal parts as halves. For example, if we have a complete object like as a circle, which represents a whole, and if we divide it into two equal parts, and out of the two equal parts, if one part is shaded, then we say one half is shaded and we write one by two is shaded, where one represents the number of shaded parts and two represents the total number of parts the whole is divided into. So note this children. You may have also seen that the fraction 1 by 2 or any fraction return in such form where you can see a number 1 with a forward slash and then the next number. So this is also the other way of writing the fraction but we will follow only the way which is written with the number up and with the number down. So what is 1 by 2? 1 by 2 is a fraction written for the a whole which is divided into two equal parts. So children here the two equal parts not necessary that it should be divided vertically only. The whole can also be divided horizontally or it can also be divided diagonally. But important here is to keep in mind that for writing a fraction the whole should be divided into equal number of parts. Then only we can write the fraction either for a part or for the complete whole. But it should not be unequally divided children like shown here. For this we can say it is not divided into two equal parts and hence for this one we cannot write the fraction children. Now let us learn if a figure is divided into two equal parts. And if both the parts are shaded, then how can we write the fraction for it? And how can we say how to read it in words? Look at this children. What fraction of each rectangle is green? Look at the first figure. In this figure, it's a rectangle which is divided equally into two parts out of which one part is shaded. So we write the fraction for this shaded part as 1 by 2. You should write, say like this and write 1 by 2. And in words, you should read or say it as 1 half if one part is shaded of, of the two equal parts. And if both the equal parts are shaded, look at the second picture. If both the equal parts are shaded, then you should write the fraction as 2 by 2 where the number 2 which is written up shows that the number of shaded parts and the digit 2 which is written down shows the total number of parts the figure is divided into. So that is 2 parts only and we should say it as 2 halves or 1 whole. This is how we read and write half or one half in our real life examples. Just look at the examples given here children. The first one is an orange divided into two equal parts. So one part of that orange we say half of an orange. We can say half of a circle. If a circle is divided into two equal parts, then one part of it we can say as half of a circle. 
here you can see a glass of water filled with water not completely only half so glass half full or we can say half glass of water and we know how to write half in the fraction as 1 by 2 and one half of the watermelon here that means one half of the watermelon used so half of the watermelon so this is how children we are using fractions concept in our real life let us see an example on how we can divide the figure into two equal halves draw a line across the chocolate bar if Rima had got a half so here is the chocolate bar we have and now we have to draw a line on this chocolate bar such that we can make it into two equal halves and we can give one half to Rima. So children, if we draw a line from the middle of the chocolate bar, then we can get two halves and one half of it can be given to Rima. And we say one half of the chocolate, we write one by two of the chocolate. Now children, not necessary that the chocolate bar should be divided vertically only. We can also have the horizontal division in the same chocolate bar. If we have the horizontal line from the middle of the chocolate bar like this, then also we can get two halves out of which one half Rima can get. So again, we say the same one half of the chocolate Rima gets and we write one by two of the chocolate. We have learned about halves. Now let us learn what are thirds. When a whole is divided into three equal parts, we call the equal parts as thirds. Example, if we have a figure like this, which is divided into three equal parts, then we call the equal parts as thirds. Now let us learn if a part of this figure is shaded, how we can read and write the fraction. If one part is shaded or two parts are shaded or if all the three parts are shaded, then also how we can read and write the fraction for it. What fraction of each rectangle is orange? Now children, observe the same figure is divided. The same figure is shown, but here it is shaded. If one part is shaded, then we write the fraction as 1 by 3, where 1 shows the number of shaded part and the number 3 written down shows the total number of parts the figure is divided into. So we write 1 by 3 and we say it as 1 third to the shaded part. Now if two parts of the rectangle is shaded as orange, then we write the fraction as 2 by 3, where 2 represents the two shaded parts and the number 3 represents the three equal parts the figure is divided into. And we say to 2 by 3 in words as 2 thirds. If the same figure is divided into three equal parts and this time if all the three parts are shaded, then we write the fraction as 3 by 3, where the number 3 written up shows the number of shaded parts and the number 3 written down of the line shows the total number of parts the figure is divided into. And we read it as 3 thirds or we all the parts are shaded or used, we can also say it as one whole. Example, let us see how we can use the concept of thirds in our real life. Children, you can see a picture there, wherein you can see there are three painters standing and they have painted the wall. Now the wall is painted in such a way that one part of it is colored more in blue and we can see one part is colored less in red. That means it shows that there are three painters and the three painters have applied the three paint colors on the wall and they have not painted equally. That means they did not do the equal work. So what we have to do in this? We can show how the men could have shared the work equally by drawing lines on the wall. 
so children if we have a plain wall like this and we have to give the equal work to the painters then since there are three painters we can divide the whole wall into three equal parts okay so for this we can draw the vertical lines like this such that we can have one part out of the three parts and one painter can paint one part of the whole wall and if we have one more vertical line then the whole wall is divided into three equal parts and the three painters can equally paint the wall so this is how the concepts of thirds can be used in our real life